So this is problem K, traffic blights. So the idea of the problem is, is fairly simple to describe. We have, we have a long street, uh, the, the beginning of the street is at zero, and we have various traffic lights spread along the street. And a car starts at time, at, at uh, zero, at time zero, or sorry, at a, at a random time, and then moves to the right and might hit some of the traffic lights. And the question is, which traffic light are they likely to hit first? Uh, it's a probability question. You have to determine the probability that they'll hit this traffic light first, or the probability they'll get through and hit this traffic light, and so on. And these traffic lights repeat regularly. As you can see, they might have medium periods or long periods or short periods, but they will all interact. Um, and since you're starting at a random time, these traffic lights may be at different points in their cycles when the car starts. So, um, what is the issue with this problem? Well, if you were to, um, if you were to consider all times, that would be far too many. You can't just simulate all possible starting times because there are many possible combinations of starts for the traffic lights. Just to give an example, if you have a three cycle light and a five cycle light, um, where, the, where it's red every three or red for two out of every five, then the overall system ends up having a cycle of length 15, like three times five, the least common multiple of three and five. And you can see that they interact in this way. So this turns into a probability problem. You want to take the concept of independent probabilities. And the nice thing about three and five, they're co-prime. In fact, their probabilities are independent. If you get through a light with cycle three, that tells you nothing about what point in the, the five cycle light you are at. The, the probabilities end up multiplying out. The probability that you pass both the three cycle light and the five cycle light is just the probability that you pass the three cycle light multiplied by the probability you pass the five cycle light. Um, so that's great. That would be wonder, that would, that would just solve the problem if all of the lights had co-prime um, cycle lengths, but they don't. And this, this becomes a real issue. So for instance, these are all the prime powers less than or equal to 100. If you have, um, if you have a light of uh, period 10, all of a sudden, two and five become dependent on each other. Uh, these prime factors basically become dependent. And from then on, anytime you, you hit a light with period two and then a light with period five, the answer to the light with period five will depend on what happened with the light with period two. And so for instance, so that's a 10. And then suppose you went through a traffic light with period 85. Then all of a sudden these are linked. And suppose you went through a light with period 38. Now all of a sudden, even 17 and 19 are dependent on each other. The probabilities no longer multiply out. This is a real problem. So, um, so how do we deal with this? Well, the answer is we remove low primes from the equation. The problem here is just that these low primes end up uh, being, being the glue that connects all of the other primes. Um, so if we were to remove these low primes from the situation, we wouldn't be able to get 17 and 19 dependent on each other. They remain independent. So we take this magic number, which I'll explain slightly later. Um, and uh, so 25, 20. And what we do is we consider only cars that arrive with a specific modulus of 25, 20. So for instance, cars that arrive at time t equals 1, 25, 21, 50, 41, and so on. So this is a subproblem. And um, if you consider a light that has period T, then once you consider this subproblem, the system of that light ends up having a period of T over GCD T2520. So for instance, if T was 22 or eight, if, if T was 85, then since five is a factor of 2520, that doesn't, that doesn't count and the cycle of this system, modulo 2520, is just 17. All of these values for t up to 100 are co-prime. In fact, they are, they are prime powers. Um, we end up with 2 cubed, 3, 5, 7, 11, and so on. All co-prime. And this means that, they are, that the probabilities remain independent. Hooray! We can solve it the way that we talked about before. So our algorithm is we run a loop from zero all the way up to 2519 and solve that subproblem for all cars that arrive 
at that modulus, uh, modulo 2520. And for each of those, we st simply store a list of filters for the various co-prime um, cycle lengths. All of those are just, they're, they're no larger than 100. And then you, have, you can multiply the probabilities out. They all multiply nicely, they're all independent. And once you've solved each of those individual subproblems, you just sum up all the probabilities from 0 to 25, 19, and you're done. This is, um, this is basically a meet in the middle problem um, because we are, we are going top down. We, we are going top down by introducing the idea of independent probabilities, splitting the solution space up uh, using independent probabilities. But we are also going bottom up by using this modulus and only considering times modulo that by basically removing the bottom powers, the low primes from the bottom up and all other primes from the top down. And we chose this, this factor. This is the meet in the middle factor, basically. It's the square root that, that ends up in the problem. Um, and once you choose this magic number, then the bottom up meets the top down and the solution, the problem is solved. Thank you.